my name is Charlene Lynch. I am a speaker and thought leader on Mind Shift for Momentum. I am so excited to be speaking today on the Prosperity Show with Prosper. We are going to dive in deep to understand how to move from where you are to where you want to be. I'm going to get personal and share my personal story of transformation, and I'm going to share some hot tips and how you can be the expert authority. Welcome to the Online Prosperity Show, and I'm your host, Prosper Tarovinga. And on this episode today, we have a truly remarkable guest that's joining us. Charlene, how are you doing, Mona? I am magnificently magnificent. Thank you, Prosper. Fantastic. I love how you answered that question because other people are just, I'm fine, I'm good, but you're magnificently magnificent. And for those that are watching right now, you're definitely going to taste that magnificence. Now, Charlene is the vice president of Healing Through Love. We were just talking about that. Uh, And big shout out to Rose, who is um, also the other half of uh this um not not for profit and she's uh, dedicated to providing pamper days for women that have been impacted by family and domestic violence but charlene's journey is one of profound transformation and that's the reason why we are here today because she's overcome personal adversity and she has emerged as a thought leader in mind shift. We're definitely going to walk through that process and how it actually helps other people um, work through their life and shift their mindsets. And this is basically the future of mindset. Now, with her extensive experience as an international speaker, multi-passionate entrepreneur and veteran workshop facilitator Shalene brings invaluable insights and tools to help us create lives that actually thrive and if that's not impressive enough she's also an accomplished belly dancer so you get ready to be inspired as we delve into this um you know into Shalene's story of resilience and success now Shalene while I was you know saying out your introduction I was really amazed with all the things that you have um, accomplished. Tell us, how did this all come together? Maybe let's yeah. start off with, um, you know, the, the journey you're on right now. Thank you and bless and prosper. It's not a happy story. So this does come with some trigger uh, warnings for those who are listening today. But unfortunately, in September 2011, I had a my own personal tragedy and my beautiful baby boy, my 17-year-old baby boy, one week off his 18th birthday, he took his own life. That changed everything for me, absolutely everything. It was, uh, it's not what anyone ever expects. And it's not something that you wake up knowing something's going to happen at the end of the day. And for those of you who live in an environment where mental health is a challenge, then my heart goes out to you. I've been in that space myself. And to know that there is light at the end of the tunnel and that we don't need to make permanent solutions to temporary problems. So that night of my baby's passing, I made a decision that I was going to live a different life. And um, that started with a decision. And we make decisions all the time, but when you really understand the power of decisions and that you don't go back on them, that you stay with them, that's what's really very powerful. Because when we make a decision, the word decision means to cut off and kill other options. So when we make a decision, we're cutting off and killing all other options to do something else. And we're allowing our own psychological immune system to kick in to support us. So getting married is a decision, yes? So we make decisions all the time, but when you make a decision and back yourself, everything changes. So I made a decision that night that my life was going to thrive and it was going to change. And I didn't really know what a thriving life looked like because my life was, I'm going to say it, in the toilet in September 2011. It was not in a good place. I was a chronic hoarder, not just a little hoarder. We're talking 33 cubic metres of stuff. So the type of hoarder they make movies about. I was OCD to the point of self-harm, ADHD to the point of distraction. I was very unhealthy, 25 kilos overweight, 
And I had been an alcoholic for more than 30 years, a high functioning alcoholic, but nonetheless, still an alcoholic. So you can see my life was not where it needed to be. And imagining a life that thrived, you know, how can you imagine that from a place when you're living in a quagmire, in a swamp, you know? So, but it does start with that shift process. And that's what I really would love to cover off today, the, the shift process and what got me from where I was to, to where I am. Is that okay, Prosper? Absolutely. I'm just really in awe because I'm so sorry to hear about your son, by the way, but from the things that you are talking about, are, are we talking about a totally different person? Because the Charlene I'm looking at today does not look like a hoarder, does not look like they didn't have uh, their things together. How did you manage to carve out what we see today on, on this show right now. And bless, bless Prosper. I'm going to go through the process. And yes, I also want to draw attention to the fact that we collectively, the human race, we have no idea what's happening behind closed doors for people. We don't have any idea. We see an image of what people project and we do not know what's happening behind. So can I just always say be kind because we do not know what's happening behind closed doors. Always be kind. So I, on the outside, looked like things were doing okay. You know, only a select few number of people came to my home. The home was more than 15 rooms. There were rooms that people were never allowed to go into. So on the outside looking in, it looked like I had my life together. I was still actively contributing to the to the to the universe doing the things every day yes and I was still struggling with mental health issues so that's the first thing let's be kind we don't know what's happening for people so the process is a five-step process and I really want to cover this off because this is absolutely gold yes and there's three things that happened before that that night when my baby was taken from me I was praying that I would be able to bring him back to life when the ambulance officers came I was praying that they would be able to do what I was unable to do. And I did get an answer to my prayers, but it was not the answer I was looking for. So as I'm sitting there praying, I heard one word, one word, and it was forgive. Forgive. That is not the word I was looking for. I was looking for a, a Lazarus moment. I was looking for him to come back to life. When I was able to stand up and the ambulance officer said, do you want to come in and say your goodbyes? And I did. I went in and my baby was six foot two, almost six foot three. So a really big boy, a rugby player. And I lied down on the ground next to him and I rested my head on his shoulder and I said, mommy loves you, baby. And I forgive you for your choice. Now, I did not understand then until sometime later when I unpacked it, that my act of forgiving him put me healing at the speed of love healing at the speed of love. So listeners today, you know, if you want to move forward, the first thing is, who do you need to forgive? Sometimes it's ourselves. Now, I forgave him instantly. Mm. <laughs> it's it took me some time to forgive myself. Yes, but it, this enabled me to process and move forward. That also enabled me that night to make a decision of living a life that thrives, even though I had no concept of what that looked like. And then I knew enough, being a woman of faith, to know that I needed to give thanks. So that morning, the next morning when we got out of bed, because nobody slept that night, I grabbed a spiral brown folder and I just started to write out all the things that I was grateful for. And it just went for pages and pages and pages. And I still keep a gratitude journal today. And gratitude, do you know that gratitude is a frequency of 540 hertz right up there with joy and love? So that when we reach into gratitude, it makes what we have enough. Isn't that fascinating? It's a paradox. So leaning into that that leaning into that um, gratitude really changed everything for me. It enabled me to realize that I can move forward and be grateful for where I am and understanding that, you know, I can move forward. So they're the three things that are necessary before the shift process. You need to start with that heart that's in a space of forgiveness. Make a decision that you want to live a different life and then also lift your frequency because it your frequency needs to be shifted with gratitude that's it. so that begins the shift process can i go through the shift process absolutely yes that that will be amazing thank you yep so like any good acronym it's five letters and it spells out shift and the first letter is s and s is to see the big picture see the big picture of what's possible for you the challenge for me is I was surrounded with everything that was not supporting me living my best life. But when I could see a big picture, a bigger picture, a massive picture, a picture that was so huge, 
that it was just unbelievable. Like who, who could have thought? I wrote down on my book, world-class transformational speaker. And then I laughed and then I cried because how dare I think that I would have anything to give considering the environment that I was living in. Yes, and your dream needs to be that big. It needs to be bigger than Ben-Hur. It needs to be so huge that you cannot think that it's possible because then we're reaching, we're moving forward. And then the things that happen for you on a daily basis, just a little pebbles on the ground rather than cliff faces. When we have just small goals, small visions of our life, that's that's what we amount to. Or we just miss them and live just a little bit short. But when you have huge, unrealistic, see the big picture goals, we are driven by desire. Humans do not have a change management problem. We have a desire issue. We need to live from a space of desire. When you desire big things, bigger pictures, making a difference, moving forwards, something that's outside of yourself, there is an energy that fills your soul that you can do anything. I swear, you can probably walk on water. <laughs> I don't know, but I will try that one. So S is to see the big picture. The next one, the next letter is H. H. H is to hone in on reality. Now, this is where many other processes start. They start with, where are you now? And here's the challenge. If you've got OCD, ADHD, and you're an alcoholic, you're overweight, you've got all of these ha happening. If you start from where you are, the frequency just keeps going down. And you're just slapping in the face all the time of the things that aren't going right. But when you see the big picture of what's possible, you've now drawn a line in the sand for a higher frequency and you can take with fresh eyes a look at the honing in on reality of where you are. I will suggest this is where you need a coach. This is where you need a mentor. This is where you need someone who can see the things you cannot see. We can't see the trees for the forest. I needed to get specialists in so many different areas. I'm laughing now because it is a little bit laughable because I needed a specialist Aside from AA, I needed to see someone for all of the other challenges that I was experiencing because not one person could fix all of the issues I was having. So I spent a lot of time in group therapy, one-on-one -on -one therapy, you name it. I, uh, I had it all. Yes, and it was necessary to hone in on reality to help me move forward out of the process that I was in. So the second letter is H to hone in on reality. The next letter and possibly my favorite is I. I is implement quick wins. Oh, that night, as I was sitting there on my lounge chair with my feet shoved in underneath me and I'm almost rocking backwards and forwards as the police are busying themselves questioning everybody, I'm staring at my giant cup of coffee that's now going cold and I said, I'm not just going to survive this. I'm going to thrive through this. That's what Scott would want. Now, that is such an unusual thing for a mother to say on the night that their son took their own life that the police wrote it down and then later on questioned me about it because it is not something someone says. Yes, and because I'd started with my heart with forgiveness, I was now able to make a decision. But, you know, that night I didn't drink coffee. That went cold and I haven't touched coffee since. So for me, that was my implement quick wins. If I could give up coffee and I was an eight cup a day girl, when you drink five bottles of wine, you need eight cups of coffee just to balance it out. So if I was able to give up coffee and never drink coffee again, if I can give up, if I can give up coffee, maybe I can give up alcohol. Maybe I can. And it's those implement quick wins. When you implement a quick win, what happens is you give yourself a serotonin hit. It makes other change possible. And so if you've got a big view of what you want for your life, if you can implement quick wins, 1% at a time compounded, one step at a time, everything is possible. Everything is possible. So implement quick wins. And from today, can I challenge you to find a quick win from our conversation from Prosper and myself that you can take away and you can embed because we are surrounded by information. We have information overload. Our challenge is we need to implement it. So if you can implement quick wins, just one thing at a time, it only has to be one behavior at a time, one, one thought process at a time, everything will change. The next letter is F and F is to focus on the patterns because we didn't get where we are by mistake. We are pattern repeat, pattern repeat, pattern repeat, pattern repeat. They say, if you show me the boy at seven, I'll show you the man. And this is true because we are just a repeat of patterns. So I didn't wake up one day and just become a hoarder. I had been working on this for a long time. I didn't wake up one day and become an alcoholic. I had been working on the patterns and behaviors to get me there. So this is the secret weapon. This is a journal. This can change your life. 
a piece of paper wrapped and bound. This with a pen can really energetically change everything for you. If you are not journaling, can I challenge you to start journaling? Just pen to paper, start writing things down. The best thing to do is to ask yourself questions. Humans love questions. And just write. It's very cathartic. And what you'll notice is the patterns of your behavior, they'll emerge from this like, like pictures from a book. You'll see the patterns. They will emerge. Now, some of your patterns are not necessarily this life patterns. They could be past life patterns. So if you're that way inclined, see a specialist in that area. And for many of you, including myself, I had many family patterns. An example is uh, when I started journaling, I started talking to my mum about how at 38 I was having suicide ideation and, you know, maybe this is something that, you know, spurred my son on to make his decision. And, and we kept, uh, during our conversation, she said, well, actually 38 is when I had my nervous breakdown. And so, and then we started keep talking and then we're like, oh my gosh, 38 is when my grandmother, her mother took her own life. These things aren't coincidences. They're patterns of repeated and they're family patterns. So, you know, we won't know about the family patterns unless we have the conversations. But for me, the journaling is what started unraveling those family patterns. And the last letter of the shift process is take massive action. Now, I'm a recovering perfectionist. That's what you get with a little bit of OCD. And um, I've got to say, take massive imperfect action. The action does not have to be perfect. You just have to take action. I would be staring like a deer in headlights and not be not move anywhere. Yes, and when I understood that the action didn't have to be perfect and I could fail forward, I would take action, I'd course correct, course correct and keep going. So they are the five magical letters of the shift process that's got me from where I was to where I am now, a world-class transformational speaker. And really, it's a journey that everyone can take. It's very, very doable, Prosper. Fantastic. And thank you so much for really laying it out bare um, for us there. There's so much to unpack from uh, this process in and of itself. And I just want to maybe go through a couple that really um, stood out for me. And um, I hope you don't mind if we just maybe revisit a few, because once that shift happens, I believe a lot of people can be doing, have a happier existence. And I think there's just that one simple thing that needs to happen or an epiphany or, you know, some sort of, you know, straw that actually then breaks that proverbial camel's back to make sure that uh, most of these things take people into that um, action you're talking about. But let's start off with the seeing the big picture you know what I mean? Because what you mentioned in there was pretty much really profound because a lot of people only see what's around them. You know what I mean? Not a lot of people have traveled the world, seen different areas. Not a lot of people have experienced different cultures or ways of being. They just think what is in front of them is what is in front of them. How do you maybe advise people that haven't actually seen much more than what's right in front of them you know like they only have that blinkered vision as as a racehorse how do you how do you then help them visualize and see much of a bigger picture or do you have tools that people can actually implement because i think that's very important since it's the first thing that uh comes in your shift process so, so yes, and there's so much more to this. Uh, we could talk about just this one letter. And in fact, the shift process is a two-day workshop. So I'm just going to summarize with the shift process. And for me, because alcohol relaxed me, and it took me some years after my son's death to give up alcohol, what I did is literally grab a bottle of wine and sit down and start just in a nice, comfortable place with a lovely pen and a piece of paper and just start crafting out what I wanted my perfect day to look like. So, you know, this could look like you sitting on a beach. It could look like sitting under a tree. It could look like your favorite pot of tea. But, you know, you need to get yourself into a nice, relaxed place, somewhere you feel safe so that you can imagine. And, you know, because for those of you who know, I come from a domestic violence background, you want to be safe so that you can write things down without getting into trouble as well. And then just get yourself into alpha state. So this is take yourself through some breathing, just relax and get yourself into the right brain waves and then start to craft your perfect day. What does it look like from the very moment you raise your consciousness? 
who's in the bed next to you? Is there someone in the bed with next to you? What is the temperature of the room? Do you have sheets? Do you have a quilt? When you put your feet down, is are you on a wooden floor? Or is it onto a mat? What's happening? Is the sun up? Is the sun down? Can you hear birds? Can you hear water? You describe every single aspect from every single sense that you have of what your perfect day is like from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. Absolutely. Now, it doesn't take five minutes. It takes a bit of a journey. So you will revisit it. It's like writing a book. You will revisit it. For those of you who are visual and you just don't want to write things down, you can visually imagine it and you can like hold it in your head like a bookmark and come back and revisit it like you're visiting a dream. For those of you who are auditory, you're probably going to want to write it down and definitely kinesthetics will probably want to write it down as well. So depending on what your learning modality is, you just need to capture that perfect day. And so once you've captured that perfect day and been through that entire process, then you can revisit it for four minutes a day, four minutes a day. So for four minutes every day, before I really gain complete consciousness, I actually visit my perfect day, not the whole part of it, just one section of it and just hold that frequency. And now I live it. Now I live that perfect life, speaking, living in the most beautiful house, straight out of house and garden, married to the man of my dreams that seriously had loved me for 34 years and I didn't even know it. And um, so like, yes, all of this is possible when we set that frequency of our level of intention and we magnify, we basically manifest it really for want of a better word. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm starting to see it now, as you say, to visualize it, because what you're talking about is more like creating a shopping list, right? So you go in, when you're going to find whatever you want to the shops, you write it down so that you don't get that which you don't want. And once you've got the shopping list of what you want your perfect day to look like, then obviously you now set uh, things in motion to start working towards, um, you know, achieving that. Now, in doing that and in the process of working towards, you know, that realization of that particular day, they is going to be a need for motivation or resilience because a lot of things are going to be pushing you back than moving you forward. Now, how do you, or maybe how did you maintain the motivation to keep going, um, you know, in the face of all these things that were coming against you and all the setbacks that were coming your way? And how do you maybe advise other people to um, maybe do what you did? Yeah, it definitely comes from a place of desire. And as I mentioned before, humans don't have a change challenge. We have a desire challenge. It's like it's almost been beaten out of us. We need to reach back into that heightened desire for the things that you want in your life, whether it be relationships, the work environment, physical things, health, all of those things. When we can envision it first, when we can hold the frequency of the reality of those first, we can lean towards that. And then what happens is your own reticular activating system and becomes plugged in and the things that you need to see will literally turn up in front of you. But it's not until you, as you say, set the shopping list that you don't allow that part of your brain processing to be opened up for different possibilities. The right people will turn up in front of you. The right relationships will show up on every level. When we can start with that big picture and we can lean into that heightened desire, it, and, you know, every time things didn't go right and, hey, <laughs> a lot of things went wrong on the journey from where I was to where I am now, I leant back into that frequency of that heightened desire of the perfect day. Charlene, you, you've accomplished a lot. You've done so much for other people. What would Scott think of his mum today? Uh, I like to think that he's proud that I have made an impact in the space of the family and domestic violence with our beautiful Pampa Days now going global too. So if you're listening to this and you would like to expand your business and pay it forward and make a difference, please reach out to us. We've now got a global arm of Healing Through Love. And, uh, yeah, I get that he's proud. I feel that he's proud. I have beautiful conversations with him every day. They are like mother conversations and it's I live in the place of the loving rather than the missing of him. So recently I got married 130 days ago and it was about remembering him on the day rather than, than missing him. So holding that frequency of the loving of him rather than the missing makes a huge difference. But, yes, I feel that he's proud. 
Fantastic. And congratulations on the new marriage. It's very good news. All right. Now, obviously, this has worked for you and you're working with a lot more other people that might be in a situation that you were in. And they're also trying to get maybe on the straight and narrow. Could you maybe share a story of somebody whose life was actually transformed through your mind shift program? Oh, <laughs> There are so many and they all have changed and grown and expanded in different ways. So most people that come to work with me are, are what some type of wellness practitioner or some, so I have actually worked with people in property as well and also IT, but predominantly they're wellness practitioners. So they've come quite far in their expansion journey of themselves. Yes, and there's still stories, still things that are holding them back from living the next level of themselves. So using the shift process and also what I call the align process, which is where we go through and we find out exactly what it is that you bring to this planet. What is your uniqueness that really can make you stand up and shine? So what is connects to your purpose that can help you stand up and make a difference for other people? So we connect to that. And then we have a look at the skill sets that you have and understanding what it is that you do. And basically, because I'm dyslexic, when you talk, I see pictures. So I ask you a series of questions. We get to know your avatar more. We understand their problems and we solve their problems. And then basically what we do is using the combination of the shift process and the align process is we create infographics that help them explain what it is that they do very simply, very succinctly and very beautifully branded to their particular personal brand. So I've got stories of people being in the right time, right place at the right time. They've had their graphics finished, their pitch decks completed, and they're just they've been able to speak to camera and, and reel off the four, the four main models that they talk about. And right at that moment in time, someone has had the money in their hand ready to invest in that program for their school. So like it's like it's like when you're prepared, it just the magic absolutely happens. I've had people who've stepped up and now work in the, their perfect job. So they didn't want to be an entrepreneur. They wanted a position in a job and they now run the entire division and in, and actually got a $24,000 pay increase. So it's, so it's not just about being an entrepreneur. It's also about uh, being in the right place at the right time. And uh, you know, living the life of your dream. So that's what I really share with people is being able to envision the life of your dreams, lean into it and create that for yourself. Fantastic. That's a big shift right there because when you can see the big picture and hone in on the reality, as you say, and then go in and um, implement, especially the quick wins, whatever you've learned, you just jump on and, um, you know, implement it there and then, essentially focus on the patterns that are you know blocking you or enabling you because that's what will then help you um you know institute the uh action that is now needed for you to um you know create that shift in your business now you also have uh, what's called the Expert Authority Masterclass which people can uh jump on can you um first of all tell us what inspired you to create this and how does it benefit the listener right now? Yes, so part of my big vision was to become a world-class transformational speaker. So I ticked that box in 2016 and started the Speakers Institute to become the world-class transformational speaker that you see in front of you. Yes, and in 2017, there was something missing. I needed graphics to explain the process that I bring. It's one thing to explain it. It's another thing to have branded branded assets. So I started working with Renee and realized, OMG, this has taken me from smaller platforms to bigger platforms, more income as a speaker and also bigger gigs. So I'm like, wow, this is really something. I love this so much. I want to bring this to my community. So then I become a licensee and now I share that with the people that I work with. So the Align process, which is expert authority, takes everything that I know in and around holistic psychology and accounting, and I've been a business coach for more than 30 years, takes all of that on board, everything that I know about mental health and all the other things that are those combinations, including your limiting beliefs, 
all of that together and then listen to you and ask you the right questions to extract the gold that's in your brain. So that's what expert authority is about, is giving me an opportunity to showcase what it is that we do and visually showing you the stories from other people. And you'll see, oh, I get it. I see. Yes, because you can understand what these people are sharing because you're seeing a visual model of what it is that they deliver. So this means you can expand this to your social media. This means that you can write a book with it. It means that it can be your pitch deck, your sales brochure. It's limitless what this can be. And it is a magical journey. I love it. I love turning up to work every day and just sharing this beautiful opportunities with people to expand their their life. My motto is, my tagline is, <laughs> earn more, work less. And it's, and it's so true. I've now taken myself to a four-day week. And interestingly enough, I earn the same, if not more, money and I work less hours. So if, what's that about? So <laughs> I know, right? And here I was for most of my life thinking that we had to work hard and earn, you know, work, do the hours to earn the money. But I'm now working much less than I ever have before. And I'm earning much more than I ever have before. So shifting all those paradigms in and around the money stories. Fantastic. Well, just watching you work right now is is a work of is 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 something to marvel at. And what would be the best way that people can get this um uh, masterclass? Oh, look, thank you for asking. So I'm on all the socials and it's Charlene Lynch. So S, spelt with an S, that is the Irish way of spelling Charlene because I'm Irish descent and Lynch, well, very uh, Irish name. So Charlene Lynch, you can find me on my website. You can find me on LinkedIn. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook as well, all under my own name, Charlene Lynch. And I, usually the team is all over um, spreading the information about the masterclasses, but I can also give you a link as well, Prosper. Fantastic. I'll make sure that all those links are right at the bottom of the show notes. Now, I picked up on something there, Charlene, while you're talking about your heritage, your Irish heritage. You obviously don't river dance or Irish tap dance, but you actually belly dance, don't you? Yes, I do. So interestingly enough, so the Lynch tribe, uh, they're very gypsy. So I come from a very, very, very long line of Irish gypsies. And so we love to dance. And it's interesting that my relatives do tarots and tea readings and all the very gypsy things. So it's like I didn't even deliberately do this to become a belly dancer. It just was always in me. And then when I was given the opportunity, I led into it. And now I've been dancing for more than 20 years and I love it. It is so freeing. It is so feminine. It is so girly and fun. And uh, it's hard to believe they pay you for that. <laughs> But that's okay. Uh, we do it for fitness and for fun. And it is a beautiful way to make a difference for other people as well. Absolutely. And you've done quite a lot to make a difference for a lot of people because I really believe we're here to leave, to learn and to contribute. And you, Charlene, have lived the hardest and now you're living the best of lives and you've learned the lessons that you needed to learn. Now you're contributing to everybody else who, you know, might be going through stuff and also wants to learn how to speak. And speaking of speaking, you are doing something in terms of um, helping other speakers find their voice and share their message. Can we just touch up on that a little bit? Because I'm already, um, you know, excited about that because I feel like if, if somebody can speak, then obviously, um, you know, it would actually expand their platform. I love it. Thank you for asking. So Speakers Institute are running a series of online classes. I've got some in the first couple of weeks of August and I'll put the links everywhere. And it's in and around body language and mastering your body language because the truth of the matter is they are not listening to you. They're watching you. So we take you through and show you how you can use in just a 90 minute masterclass, how you can master your body language so you can get people's attention, so you can keep their attention and you can get them to take action from what it is that you're doing. So I love it. And that is the front end of funnel for a three day masterclass workshop. So it's an in person workshop where you get to learn Now we have them in all the major cities, Sydney, we have them in Adelaide, we have them in Brisbane, we have them in Melbourne, we have them in Perth. And they are actually overseas as well in Singapore. And we're running a series in America as well uh, in the California area. So uh, you can attend online or in person. And we the front end of Fundal is both, either in person or online. But you, 
We need to master this level of communication because you can bring the best of information to this planet. Yes, and if you don't have a way to communicate it, you're not going to come from that level of expert authority and that level of confidence. People want confidence. They want surety. And, you know, you want to get your message across, you need to learn how to speak confidently. Fantastic. Well, for those that are watching, you can tell this gypsy has taken us on a journey from exactly where she started right at the bottom of everything else and rising up like a phoenix, rising above the ashes. And I really appreciate your time. And we now know what it is that you've been working on and how you've been helping people see the big picture, resulting in them taking massive action in order to shift um, you know, their perspective. But I still have one more question before I let you go, Charlene. And um, obviously, this will be something that our audience is sitting at the edge of the seat waiting. All right. So you've been there. You've done that. You've seen it all, even done the belly dance and everything else. What's next for Charlene? I love this question. I have a bigger picture. I have a much bigger picture of me standing on bigger stages across the world and sharing this information so that we can look at mental health differently, so that we can see that we're mentally able differently and we can take the stigma away and let people know that more is possible for them and their lives and that we can lift their level of desire. So bigger stages, more globally, all around the world, in person and another world tour. Absolutely. This has been fantastic. And thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Online Prosperity Show, where we really had a privilege of learning so much about um, Charlene Lynch. And Charlene, thank you so much for sharing your time and space with us today. Thank you. Bless. Absolutely. And for those that are watching, you can tell Charlene has been through it all, her journey of personal transformation combined with her expertise in mindset and business coaching has really empowered countless individuals to overcome challenges and to also thrive. Remember, business is personal and by harnessing personal tools and techniques, we can actually create lives that truly thrive. Now, I want you to stay tuned for more inspiring episodes. And until next time, help me thank Charlene, my guest for today. And keep prospering. Bye for now.